Welcome to the Young Justice Iceberg video. Obviously, there will be spoilers ahead if you have yet to catch up before the upcoming Season 4 release. Wally is still alive has been a theory since his death at the end of Season 2. These theories include Wally being trapped in the Speed Force or going to the future. Wally being alive at all seemed like a stretch until Season 3 Outsiders air. In the episode Nightmare Monkeys, during Beast Boy's hallucination, he sees every currently dead leaguer and team member. One by one, they die again, except for Wally. Toward the end of the same season, in the episode Overwhelmed, Artemis thinks she's getting closure with Wally's spirit before it was revealed that it was all a ruse and they'd never made contact with his ghost. With the upcoming Season 4 being called Phantoms, it's actually possible these theories might finally become true. Young Justice takes place on the fictional Earth-16, separate from anything else in the DC multiverse. This isn't the first or last time this version of Earth was used in the comics. It was once used in DC Nation number 89 and again in Countdown Arena. All three of these worlds contradict each other in their storylines. Many animated series get a comic to capitalize on its success, but most never have anything to do with the actual plot of the show. This changes with Young Justice, as the show's creative team had direct influence on the tie-in comic and many times the show has referenced something that has happened in the comics. The tie-in Young Justice comic also adds dates to every scene, so it's easy to see where they take place in between episodes. The Speed Force is the source of all speedsters' powers in the DC Universe. On top of their usual powers, characters can sometimes use it to move through time or through the multiverse. When Wally died, it was speculated that he was trapped in the Speed Force, but creator Greg Wiseman has made it very clear that this isn't the case. Wiseman started out saying that the Speed Force doesn't exist at all, but retracted that and then said that if it did exist, nobody on Earth-16 had ever heard of it. Either way, it doesn't seem like he intends to use the Speed Force in the future. DC Universe was a streaming service for DC Comics. It included many comics, movies, and original series. This is where Young Justice was resurrected for its third season. DC Universe lasted from September 2018 until being rebranded into the DC Universe Infinite in January 2021. It is now a comics-only app and most of their film and TV content now has moved to HBO Max. In February 2015, Teen Titans Go aired a crossover with Young Justice titled Let's Get Serious. It featured stylized versions of Aqualad, Miss Martian, and Superboy. Despite common belief, Teen Titans Go didn't actually replace Young Justice. Creator Greg Wiseman even said the show's popularity helped Young Justice come back and return the favor with a Teen Titans Go style Doom Patrol hallucination in Season 3. Young Justice Legacy is a 2013 video game that takes place shortly before Season 2. It features 12 playable characters and an alien based on the god Tai Mat as the villain. It's okay. The most notable thing that happens during this game is the death of Aqua Girl, and the rest feels pretty self-contained. The reason for the show's cancellation was long thought due to a high female viewership for a show with a male target audience. This rumor spread because of statements made by Paul Dini, who didn't actually work on the show. This was officially disconfirmed when Wiseman said that wasn't the case, and that it was really cancelled because the toy line, Mattel, a major show funder, was also tied to the live-action Green Lantern movie. When that movie flopped and the toys for Young Justice also did not sell well, Mattel pulled out of funding and Young Justice was cancelled as a result. Young Justice was originally a comic written by Peter David that first debuted in 1998. Despite sharing the same name, the only shared team member from the core cast is Superboy, who is portrayed as more lighthearted and cocky. Other comic members included the Tim Drake Robin, Impulse, Wonder Girl, Arrowette, Secret, Empress, and Slowbo. The title was rebooted in 2019, once again having nothing to do with the animated series. The new team lineup included Superboy, Tim Drake, Wonder Girl, Impulse, Amethyst, and featured new characters Teen Lantern and Ginny Hex. 
Over the series, many superheroes have had children who all get together for playdates. As of Season 3, Outsiders, this includes Red Arrow's daughter Leanne, Superman and Lois' son Jonathan, Aquaman and Mara's son Artur, Rocket's son Amistad, Black Lightning's daughters Jennifer and Anissa, Red Tornado's daughter Treya, and Barry and Iris' twins Dawn and Dawn. DC Nation was a Saturday morning block on the Cartoon Network that showed DC-only programming. It began on March 2012 and went until March 2014. Along with Young Justice, it aired the Green Lantern animated series, Beware the Batman, other DC shorts, and Teen Titans Go! Greg Wiseman has stated that LGBT characters were always intended to be a part of Young Justice, but the powers that be prevented him from showing it on screen. Cartoon Network has had a long history of censoring queer characters, and this is likely what he's referring to. Since being revived on streaming, Young Justice has finally been able to portray characters as they were intended, but Greg says that even still there's been some pushback on LGBT representation. The show has definitely gotten crowded over the years, and in Outsiders, it came at the cost of comic readers' favorite characters. Despite being featured in early promotional art, 13, Arrowette, Orphan, and Spoiler were only prominently featured in one or two episodes, leaving casual fans confused about aspects that weren't so obvious, like why Arrowette's costume was similar to Artemis's, or what 13's powers were. Young Justice first premiered with an hour-long pilot in November 2010. The pilot consisted of the first two episodes edited into an hour-long movie without any opening theme. It's pretty hard to find now as the episodes are shown separately on streaming and may even be considered lost media. Calderon was originally created for the Young Justice TV show, but DC brought him into the comics so quickly that he showed up there seven months earlier than on the show. The comic version of Kaldor was named Jackson Hyde and was born on the surface world. They have very little in common besides their code name and design. While Artemis was already an existing character in DC Comics, the show had drastically changed her backstory and personality. Originally, she was a villain going by the code name Tigress. She had the same parents as in Young Justice, but Artemis and Cheshire have nothing to do with each other. In 2011, Artemis was reintroduced in the New 52, and this version of Artemis was more similar to her Young Justice counterpart, though she quickly died, then came back, and then was never seen again. Since Season 1, there have been multiple civilian cameos that have led to later hero appearances. These include Batgirl, Firebird, Lagoon Boy, Arrowette, Bumblebee, Guardian, and Beast Boy in Season 1, Spoiler in Season 2, and with Vibe, Bluebird, and possibly Slowbo in Season 3. Nightwing usually gets around in all of the DC Universe, and that especially applies to Young Justice Nightwing. He's dated Zatanna, Rocket, Bet Kane, and is currently in a relationship with Oracle. During the time skip between seasons 1 and 2, multiple members have joined and left the team. Wiseman has confirmed these to be Troya, Sergeant Marvel and Lieutenant Marvel, Aqua Girl, Tempest, and Jason Todd's Robin. Troya, Tula, Garth, and Jason all have known designs, while the Marvels still remain a mystery. Many heroes have died over the course of Young Justice on and off screen. Wally West, Aqua Girl, and Robin are all dead team members, while the original Blue Beetle died from the League. The entire Doom Patrol, aside from Mento, was also killed, and unfortunately, Lagoon Boy is still alive. Both of the Marvels and Troya were meant to appear in Invasion during the final rallying of the heroes, and both Troya and Mary were intended to appear during Rocket's Bridal Shower. However, due to deadlines and budget constraints, they weren't able to design and use the characters in time. There were many plots planned to be an invasion that had to be cut because they didn't have enough episodes in the season. These plots included a Red Tornado storyline, a follow-up with Zatanna and Dr. Fate, a plot involving the Marvels, more of the Arrow family, an arc involving young rookies training in the Green Lantern Corps, 
and the flashback and intervention involving Batgirl and Zatanna discovering the beetle emblem in the temple. This refers to creator Greg Wiseman's website, where he has an open Q&A section. This has been the source for lots of information about the show since its premiere, including character ages and the facts used in this iceberg. In the movie Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery, Miss Martian, Artemis, Wonder Girl, and Zatanna can be seen together on a couch, watching a match in their civilian clothing. This cameo likely came from the film's director and Young Justice co-creator Brandon Vietti. The Prize is an audio play that premiered at the DC Fandom in September 2020. It takes place during Season 3.9 and sets up a few things for Season 4. It's about a party for Connor and Megan that ends up in a fight against the Suicide Squad. A couple of important things are revealed during this, like Roy rejoining the team, Zatanna having multiple protégés, and Superboy, Miss Martian, Beast Boy, and Martian Manhunter going to an unknown far-off place. Probably Mars. When you take the first letter of each episode of Outsiders, it spells, Prepare the Anti-Life Equation which is directly related to Darkseid's goals revealed at the end of the season. Co-creators Greg and Brandon have revealed that when developing the show, they had a master list with over 50 potential teen DC heroes to be a part of the cast. Of the ones we haven't seen yet, there's Raven, Starfire, Bombshell, Mia Dearden's Speedy, and Supergirl. Wiseman has stated that given enough time, everyone on that list would eventually be featured. Beast Boy's mother, Marie Logan, was murdered by Queen Bee between seasons 1 and 2. This was shown in the tie-in comic as Marie being entranced by Queen Bee's pheromone abilities, who then made her drive off of the cliff. Queen Bee's powers only work on those attracted to her. Batman confirms this in an earlier episode when he states her abilities work on some women. In Invasion, this is why they sent a team of all straight women. Wiseman later confirmed that Marie was either gay or bi, but when directly asked which one, he just said, yes. After the show's cancellation, Greg and Brandon pitched a few different ways to continue the show. One of these was a direct-to-video movie, but their pitch was rejected. Nothing has ever surfaced about the pitch, and knowing Wiseman's secrecy, it probably never will. Just like for the team, Greg and Brandon also had a master list for potential villains to be members of the Light. These included every character from the Injustice League and every magic villain from the episode Misplaced. Co-creator Brandon Vietti pitched a Scooby-Doo crossover movie after Young Justice's cancellation. It is still unknown what the plot would have been or if it would have been considered canon but it would likely play off of the WrestleMania cameo in some way. In April 2018, before anything was shown from the season, two photos from Outsiders leaked. They both involved Superboy fighting Plasmus. They didn't show off much, but it was the first peak of the season. When development on Young Justice first started, a handful of characters weren't allowed to be on the show. This included Wonder Girls, Troya, and Cassandra. They did eventually get permission to use them before season one ended, but it was too late in the show to include them. A common misconception is that Bart didn't actually fix the future when he went back to the past in Bloodlines. And many fans have wondered what actually happened that kept the future so bleak. Wiseman has said that Bart actually did accomplish his mission, and that it looked like that at the end of the episode because the cave had been destroyed still. Red Martians are another race of Martians in the series that have yet to appear on the show, but you can see them throughout the show's tie-in comics. Red Martians are considered royalty, and are one of the main causes for social issues on Mars. G. Gordon Godfrey was originally portrayed by Tim Curry in Invasion, but due to a stroke, 
he was not available for outsiders and was replaced by James Arnold Taylor. There was almost an Arrow family spin-off series which would have followed the characters from Invasion, but the pitch was denied. In an interview during Season 2, Wiseman mentions that Starfire was a character they were considering for Season 3. On his website, he mentioned the same for the Wonder Twins and said they had very specific plans for their version of the two. However, none of the three were featured in any way during Season 3. Most people believe Wonder Woman made her debut during World War I, as seen in the 2017 movie. The Young Justice version of Diana debuted as a hero during 1941 and fought in World War II with the All-Star Squadron. This refers to the grown man voice line said by Rocket's child Amistad in the episode Home Fires. The delivery from Aqualad's actor Carrie Payton surprised many fans and became a meme. You got a baby in you. The line was reused during the audio play The Prize when Amistad says it to Red Arrow about his beer gut. When Invasion was first announced, it was described as a 10 episode miniseries before being confirmed to be season 2. Wiseman later said that they were guaranteed 10 episodes, but they would probably get 20. In December 2019, storyboard revisionist posted his workspace to Instagram, unaware that he had leaked the title for season 4. He deleted the post almost immediately, but it had already been screen grabbed and shared. Original art for the pitch of the show has slowly come out over the years. Some photos show a slightly different art style that looks more cartoony, and other images show potential scenarios for the show, like Wally saving an unknown girl and Aqualad fighting the Joker. During a panel, Wiseman said that immediately following the end of season 1, Vandal Savage called up Hugo Strange and told him to open all the doors at Bell Rev, which explains why so many villains were free in season 2. Before the show was officially confirmed, a rumor began with an incorrect roster, which included Nightwing, Arrowette, and Impulse as being a part of season 1. Shortly after that, Artemis's voice actress Stephanie Lemelin leaked that the show existed and that she was cast as Artemis, though she called her Arrowette then. She even posted a picture of the character design for her. At the beginning of Invasion, a fake image was posted showing Nightwing in his classic outfit and Zatanna edited to be Starfire next to him. It went around social media for a little while but was debunked as fake soon after. Miss Martian and Superboy first kissed in the season 1 episode Terrors. Her voice actress, Danica McKellar, said that she was 8 months pregnant when they recorded the kiss and that she actually kissed Nolan North in the recording booth. Another pitched project was Black Manta's Celebrity Hot Tub Shorts. This pitch has a lot more information out there, as Wiseman posted the entire script on his website. The premise is Black Manta hosting a hot tub talk show, with his first guests being Black Beetle, Black Viking, and Black Lightning. Cheshire, Amanda Waller, and Killer Frost would also have appeared as backup singers. Wildstorm characters were off limits for the show at the beginning of the series, but Wiseman managed to sneak one in anyway. To this day, the character still hasn't been identified. All we know is that she is a female Wildstorm character hidden somewhere in Season 1. Wiseman confirmed that Arrowette's mother, Bonnie King Jones briefly operated as Miss Arrowette years before the start of the series. She was shortly Green Arrow's partner before Roy. While we haven't seen her on screen yet, her comic iteration is pretty messy. She's often seen driving her daughter around to find crime with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth or fighting with another hero's parent. It's time to bring her into the show. Before the show was officially confirmed, Everybody Hates Chris's Tylen Jacob Williams leaked Aqualad's design and confirmed that he had auditioned for the role. This predates Stephanie Lemelin's leak, 
and probably cost him the role. Before Invasion finished, voice actress Grey Delisle stated on her Twitter that she'd be playing Catwoman. Then Invasion ended and Catwoman never showed up. It's unknown exactly what happened and if there's any deleted scenes or lost footage featuring Catwoman. The Joker was originally going to be the one controlling the Justice League in the episode Old Acquaintance, but was replaced by Clarion for budgetary reasons, and they needed Clarion there anyways for the magic stuff. There was almost a musical episode of the show during season 1, but production decided to scrap the idea after the episode Music Meister of Batman the Brave and the Bold because they felt they couldn't touch it and the world is probably a better place for it. The spirit residing in the Helmet of Fate that gives it its power is named Naboo. In the Season 3 episode, Evolution, it is revealed that Naboo was a warrior alongside his sister and father in ancient Babylonia. It is here that we see that his father is actually Vandal Savage, pseudo-leader of the Light. Wiseman originally wanted to reveal Artemis' death fakeout much later than the same episode that it happened in, but due to Cartoon Network censorship, they couldn't leave an episode with a character last being shown explicitly dead. This is why when Raj al Ghul died, Boo Boo clearly stated that he would be resurrected and that Wally was said to cease. But now, the presence of death censorship has clearly changed with the show's move to streaming. Thanks for watching our Young Justice Iceberg video. Channel Groove sourced all the information in this iceberg. Subscribe to Channel Groove for more DC and cartoon iceberg videos.